This week at Bungie, we're learning about some brand new Crown of Sorrow raid information, changes to Power Surge bounties in Gambit Prime, and we're even getting a sneak peek at the new Eververse items set to drop in the Season of Opulence. What's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and today is Thursday, May 23rd, 2019. That means it's time to dive on into another issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. Noticeably absent from this week's TWAB, any kind of word about those nerfs last week or any buffs we might be seeing in the future. Hmm, curious that. But let's go ahead and dive on into this week's update. First things first, we have got some major changes coming to the way power progression is going to work in Season 7. They go on to note that the Drifter is going to be taking the back seat in this new season expansion, and that our friendly old sweeper bot, Benedict99, is going to be taking the front seat when it comes to powerful rewards. First up, we've got some major changes coming to the Power Surge system. It's going through a bit of an evolution here. Instead of a set of bounties, a new Power Surge quest will be your jumping off point for Season of Opulence. You'll need to complete this quest to access the new raid. Learning from the Season of the Forge, this quest must be completed only once per account. After one character completes the quest, alternate characters will be rewarded with Surge gear at power level 690. And if I can just jump off right there, I think this is great. This is fantastic. This is kind of a natural progression of the power surge bounties we got with the Drifter during the season of the Drifter, where like you go on, you complete some bounties, and it gave you, what was it, 640 gear? It was a great way for players who had been lagging behind to get caught up pretty quickly with the updated content. And I think moving this system forward to a quest that you only really need to complete once is a fantastic idea. If you're a player who maybe focuses on one character, you got one character up to 700, but you've got a couple of vaults that are maybe still in the low 600s, this is going to be a great way to get you to 690 right at the start of the new content, so you can jump right on into whatever's coming with the Season of Opulence. This is something that other MMOs have been doing for a while, specifically MMOs like World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV. And I'm glad to see that this system has been expanding and evolving within the world of Destiny 2. Fantastic change in my opinion. Alright, moving on from here, we've got some changes coming to the Gambit Bounties. We didn't want rewards from the Drifter to be one of the primary sources of power following his run as the central character for Season of the Drifter. As a result, power boosts received from Gambit Bounties will decrease once you've achieved 700 power. They will decrease even further once you've reached 720 power. And right here, we get to see something akin to the duality of man in the duality of Bungie. Bungie makes one great decision, then they make one questionable not-so-great decision. Basically, uh, Gambit, the Drifter, he's offering a few too many powerful rewards right now, so it looks like that, that's, being, that's being tuned back a little bit when it comes to the Season of Opulence. So basically, once Season 7 begins and you've reached around 720 power, you're not going to be getting very powerful rewards from the multiple powerful drops that the Drifter has. I guess I can kind of understand that from a balanced standpoint. Right now, the Drifter has a ton of different rewards that can drop you powerful stuff each and every week. And I see this change as being something as an attempt to prevent people from stacking power too quickly within the Season of Opulence and also possibly moving the attention away from the Drifter and over to Benedict for the season that's going to be concerning the Cabal. I guess, ultimately, it's not a bad choice, but it is a little bit questionable the way they're presenting it here, especially with the fact that power drops are going to be decreased even further once you reach 720 power. Maybe if they're looking to have the new six-man activity and the raid be the way that you reach in-game power along with stuff like Iron Banner, I guess I could kind of understand that. That'd be taking progression kind of back to where we were in Destiny 1. But for all the people out there who really enjoy playing Gambit and Gambit Prime, I don't know, I guess it just kind of seems a little bit weird to be taking away powerful options and rewards for people who enjoy those game modes. Or at least tuning them down. Anyways, moving on, we've got some changes coming to Prime Attunements as well. On Day 1, Prime Attunements will be reset to two charges for each player. You'll receive two new Prime Attunements, even if you are playing right up to the reset. We want you to be able to play your favorite character without it impacting your power leveling strategy. They talked about this in a previous TWAB. Basically, the rate at which you build up Prime Engrams is going to be reset when Season 7 drops. Your Prime Attunement is going to be set to two charges, so you'll be able to earn a few Prime Engrams, and then you're going to have to build that back up, that stacking uh, latent buff for Prime Engram drops over the course of the season. Again, this is a change that they're basically doing to prevent people from gaining power too quickly at the start of the season. 
All right, after that, we learn a bit more about the Crown of Sorrow raid. The raid, of course, is going to begin on day one of Season of Opulence, June 4th at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Any players who are going to want to compete in the Race for Worlds first of that raid are going to need to complete the Power Surge quest. And in addition to that, they're also creating a brand new system of kind of mini modifiers that are going to change the way the raid works for the first 24 hours. They're calling this the World First Contest. And we actually got a completely separate article early on today from Luke Smith himself talking about the philosophy behind this change. But here's basically what you can expect on June 4th, straight from the mouth of Luke Smith himself. While we love seeing players find clever ways of leveraging game mechanics, we wanted to take a step back and look at what's going to be the best player experience for those competing and those watching. Below is how we're changing the way World's First Raid Windows work for Season of Opulence and testing out a new mode titled Contest. Here's the changes that you can expect. While the contest is active, players will face an enforced challenge throughout the raid. This means power beyond certain levels will provide no advantage for a given fight. For example, for the first fight, all power above 700 won't provide an advantage. And for the final fight, power levels above 720 will not provide any advantage. We're going to deploy the update at 8 a.m. Pacific and the game will be down until 10 a.m. Pacific so that as many players as possible can get through the download and verification step and be ready for Opulence launch. After the 24-hour period ends, we will disable contests and restore the power raid relationship to its usual functionality. Then players will be able to leverage their power to overcome the raid's challenge. If this experiment goes well, we can imagine future raids launching with contest active. But first, we want to see how this one plays out. So basically, what Bungie is trying to do here is they're trying to create a completely level field for the world's first raid race. And in order to do that, all player power levels are going to be capped at power levels under each encounter within the raid for the first 24 hours. To ensure that no fire team is going to overlevel the raid encounter on day one. Basically, like they gave the example here, let's say the first encounter for the raid is sitting at 705 or 710 for the recommended light. If your fire team happens to run around on day one and build up enough powerful drops to get yourself to 708, 709, well, while the contest is active, that extra light isn't going to be any benefit for you. This is to ensure that all teams on day one are going to have the exact same experience within the raid, and the contest itself is going to be turned off after the first 24 hours. I kind of like this change. This is a great way to create that more level playing field for all of the teams that are going to be racing for Worlds First. We've seen in previous days and previous raid experiences, uh, some teams have been able to take advantage of certain things like uh, powerful bounty stacking, prime engram stacking, and stuff like that to get a early advantage against other teams. And Bungie looks like they want to treat this as an official race now. I really kind of like that. So everybody's going to have the same experience. If everybody's power level 700, everyone's going to have the same experience during the raid which should create a much more fair contest of champions. Not too bad at all. And since this also means that you're not going to be able to rely on overpowering content, this is really going to test player skill, communication, and strategy while they're going through encounters. I'm really interested in seeing how this is going to play out on June 4th. But all right, moving on to the final bit of news for this week, we've got some major Eververse updates coming our way. And yeah, I know, before you start groaning in chat, we've actually got some pretty good changes here. Let's get into it. The TWAB goes on to state that we had two main goals for the changes we're making to Eververse and Season of Opulence. First up, Direct Pick. Every new Eververse item in Season of Opulence will be available for direct purchase via Silver or Bright Dust. Most of these offers will be time limited, with new items available weekly. This is fantastic. This is something a lot of people in the community have been asking for for a long, long time. I personally have said plenty of times that I, w I don't really mind spending silver on certain things within the Eververse store, but I definitely believe that just about everything that Tess offers should be available for either a Bright Dust cost, which is something that you can build up by playing tons and tons and tons of uh, Destiny 2, putting plenty of hours in, or, you know, for the people who don't want to put in that time, being able to purchase some silver so that they can buy those items directly. I think this is a fantastic change. It's con super consumer friendly. This is exactly what I wanted to hear moving forward. And next up, Greatest Hits. Season of Opulence Bright Ingram will contain a collection of community favorite legacy items with a focus on the best of year one. If you missed out on the spicy ramen or selfie emote, Season of Opulence is your chance to get it. 
This is also something that a lot of people have been asking for. There's a lot of Eververse stuff that was kind of left in year one, whether it be ornaments or certain emotes or stuff like that. And I'm glad they're going to be bringing it back in the season of Opulence and giving players another chance to either purchase it with Bright Dust or Silver or earn it just by playing the game and earning Bright Engrams. Great moves going forward. We've also got some additional details for armor. Full armor sets will be made available as a single per class bundle, as opposed to being offered only via bright engrams. Individual armor pieces can also be purchased for bright dust whenever they appear on the storefront. These armor pieces feature fixed perk rolls that are not randomized across duplicates. This is another fantastic change. There's a lot of armor sets that are really cool looking. We talked about this on the podcast uh, last week. A lot of really cool armor sets have been tied to Eververse over the past year or so. So bringing all of those back and putting them in a single package where you can just get the entire armor set rather than basically rolling the dice with Bright Engram and hoping that you get the armor set that you need. Great change. And finally, a simpler interface. And we get a nice little picture here of uh, what Eververse is going to be looking like when Season of Opulence goes live. Specific items are now featured on the front page and will be cycled with each weekly reset. Most offers will be time limited to make way for rotating inventory, with some coming back into rotation at a later date. Players can access this new interface by visiting Tess Everest in her usual tower location. And like I said before, there you go. This is, I guess, a mock-up of what the Eververse store is going to look like when Season of Opulence goes live. Not too bad at all. Kind of uh, reminds me of what the store looked like a little bit back in Destiny 1. And then finally, wrapped items and refunds. Individual items purchased for silver will now go to the relevant character inventory location in a wrapped state. For example, a sparrow purchased directly for silver will arrive wrapped in the sparrow inventory. To use an item, it must be opened just like a bundle. Once opened, the item functions and can be accessed normally. If you wish to refund an item, you will have 7 days from purchase to do so. Items that have been opened cannot be refunded. So we're getting a bit of a surprise here. We're actually getting a refund feature with Eververse. Again, another great consumer-friendly change that I really wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting digital refunds for, you know, these kind of digital microtransaction items. Very happy to see Bungie moving forward with these types of changes. All of these changes go live on day one of Season of Opulence. As always, we'll be monitoring how this all works and are eager to hear what you do and don't like about the new storefront. But alright Guardians, that's pretty much it for the new information covered in this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. Next week, apparently we're going to be getting a kind of pinnacle weapon preview, so I cannot wait to see what's going to happen there. Pretty big changes this week. It's neat to see that we're going to be having raid contests for the world's first race. Again, that's only going to last for 24 hours, so if you don't like the way it sounds, uh, you only have to wait until the first day is done. But those changes to Eververse are absolutely massive. Very happy to see that stuff moving forward. But anyways, that's the news. Those are my thoughts. Be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed, feel free to drop a like. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. But alright, I'm out for now. Thank you, Guardian, so much for watching. And as always, I am the Black Link. You guardians, stay frosty.